everybody for coming tonight. I'm sorry about Joe Rogers. Um, <laughs> been a little preoccupied lately. Thanks to Water Chemistry standing in front of you. <clears throat> I'm, um, I've just finished a novel, I Loved You More. And it's in New York City with um, Grove Atlantic, so keep your fingers crossed. Um, it's the story of Hank and Ben. <clears throat> Hank is straight and Ben is gay and they are in love. And it's an investigation pretty much of masculinity. And it's uh, 1980s New York City. Ben, the gay, gay man, has just told Hank a story of a fight he got in with Frank's first call, Boiler and Repair. And this is chapter four, The West Side Why. Of all my stories, Hank loved the Frank's first call of boiler and repair best. The white shrimp boots just too much. That big burst from down deep in him coming up fast, shaking him around made Hank spit out his ham and cheese. He was laughing so hard. We were in a burger joint on Columbus Circle, sitting at our table at the window every Wednesday night after teaching at the West Side Y. Hank and I went there. It was just a diner, nothing special, close to the Y. The food was cheap, plenty of french fries and an endless cup of coffee. It was our place, like the window was our table. And that was our joke. Since Hank and I had been spending, spending so much time together, people started to talk. One day Hank actually got the phone call from Hal Taylor, who said certain people were getting the wrong idea. I could just imagine Hal's face when he said that, his tongue poking, poking out his cheeks like he was sucking dick. <laughs> no surprise there, Hank said. And that's all Hank ever said about it. I tried to get more out of him about what he really thought about people, his peers, friends, this and that. But you know Hank, the enigma of Hank. Then one Wednesday night at the Y, I just closed the classroom door. There were 12 adult students, New Yorkers after a long day at work, sitting at their desks in a shiny beige room under the bright fluorescence. They were all looking up at me, standing behind the lectern, as if I was the writing expert. This moment I remember well because this moment happened every Wednesday night at that time. Right after I took roll, just before I began to speak. The moment I knew that this was the class that would finally discover what a load of bullshit I really was. <laughs> Hank knew about this moment of mine because after we got our jobs at the Y, that's all I could talk about. The moment from class when my heart froze, when my voice went haywire, the flickering filament in the light bulb in my chest, when my breathing stopped just before I started to speak. That particular Wednesday, it was in that moment, after roll call, and I was just about to open my mouth. At that exact moment of terror, the door opened. He couldn't have timed it better. Everybody in the class looked over at Hank. Just his head poked in and his right forearm, white shirt sleeve rolled up, his long fingers against the wood of the door. I came here to out your teacher, Hank said. He's a fraud. <laughs> the room got quiet, the whole building. All of New York City got quiet. <laughs> the whole world hanging out there, round ball, nothing to hold it up. Only my breath and my pounding heart. Hank just stayed there at the door, smiling and looking in. I pulled the lectern into my belly. For a moment, I thought I had said it. Rob. And don't you think, Hank said, he's really sexy? 
Pinks, deep set eyes, eyes you'd expect to be blue but weren't, or dark, almost black. I then looked adoringly into my eyes across the crowd. <laughs> Those sweet smiling lips. Rooney, dear, Hank said, let's meet at our regular spot for dinner, say 9.30. <laughs> really, Hank Christian, that fucker. <laughs> Nobody made me laugh like him. And vice versa. Like the night in... <clears throat> And vice versa. Like the night in our restaurant, I told him about the Sherpa boots and Frank's first call boiler and repair. A big spray of ham and cheese across the table, I had to duck. Fucking Grunewald, Hank said. Hank was calling out for club soda and picking lettuce off his white shirt. Christ, he said, you're lucky they didn't come back and cut your nuts off. Hank had knocked over his Coca-Cola too, and we were sopping up spilled coke, spilled coke off the pink for my tabletop of paper napkins out of the tin dispenser. The waiter, Silvio, our waiter, tall, one tooth missing, brought over a glass of club soda and a bar bag. Thanks, Silvio Hanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Silvio Hanks said. We'll tend to this. Sorry about the mess. Hank grabbed the bar rag and started so sopping up the spilled coke. I'll get that, I said. You club so in your shirt. Hank looked down at his shirt. Fuck, he said, my good white teaching shirt. Salt helps too, Silvio said. I'll get another ball. I'll get another bar rag. It's always been a mystery, I said. What it is to be male and what that means. So you attack two guys from New Jersey with a fucking broom, Hank said. You find out what it is, I said, by what it ain't. The bar rag was soaked with coke. I traded with Silvio, who was back with another rag, fresh off the clean bar rag pile. Somewhere in that moment, everything stopped. In the middle of the big mess on the pink for my tabletop, Hank's white shirt, the club soda, the clean bar rack, the salt, Silvio, all of it stopped. That silence just before Silvio stepped away, I looked over at Hank. Hank was looking at the bar rack in my hand, soaked with coke. Fuck, Hank said. His face was scrunched up the way sudden pain makes her face. Over the years, I'd see Hank's face do that a bunch. The first time was that night when we stood in front of Auden's house and read the poem. This was the second time. We'd known each other six months top. I'm crying again, Hank said, and I don't ever cry. Fuck. Hank, I said, what's going on? He was trying to get his mouth to work right. Then more time to breathe. Silvio handed me the clean bar rag, treated me the soap, soap rag, took himself back to the kitchen. It's the bar rag, he said. You and the mirror and the blood on the bar rag and you trying to make sense of things. Hank's body sunk down, folded in, more dense so he could have a part in the pain that was coming out of him too. That goddamn burger joint. I can't remember the name of it. Torn down when that new Bloomberg building went up on Columbus. All those Wednesday nights after class, Hank and I sat there. Cheeseburgers and all that hope. Writers. We were going to speak the truth so real, it wasn't spoken yet. We carved language so deep into our living hearts, the reader would rip at the pages would throw the book across the room, would fuck the book, would open their veins and run out into the street cursing God Almighty.